15 Things Not To Do In Iceland Iceland's tourism industry has been booming in the past few years, and with more inexpensive airlines offering flights combined with Iceland's breathtaking landscape, it shows little sign of stopping. Here are some things to keep in mind, in order to make visiting this amazing country a treat for everyone involved. Number 1. Never do your business just anywhere. Many tourist-related problems in Iceland comes from the fact, that the tourist industry boomed, while the infrastructure was still catching up with the influx. This leads some locals to feel as if their privacy has been compromised. One example of the lack of infrastructure involves public toilets can be hard to find both in Reykjavik, and around the country. Be that as it may, it's still not a good idea to do your business on a kindergarten lawn. Number 2, don't crash their rental car while trying to find the Northern Lights. The thing about the Northern Lights is that most of the time, they're rather faint streaks of green that you can easily confuse with clouds. So, don't try looking for them while driving. If the Northerns are out, you'll see them. You won't have to look. There's nothing more aggravating than seeing a rental car that has fallen off the road because of a driver who was distracted by a cloudy sky. Number 3, avoid buying bottled water in stores. The tap water in Iceland is among the purest in the world. It's neither chlorinated nor fluorinated, simply because there's no need to do so. In fact, Tourists' main complaint about the Icelandic water is its lack of taste, because there is almost nothing in it except water. So when you visit Iceland, be sure to get a reusable flask, and drink the water that comes straight from the tap instead of wasting money on bottled water. Number 4, never travel without reading the weather report. Tourists often do not realize how changeable, and extreme both the weather and the landscape in Iceland is, although it may look like a fairy tale landscape, it most certainly is not and a lot of precautions should be made. Check the weather on the Icelandic Meteorological Society website, or risk unknowingly driving into a storm. Number 5, never wholeheartedly believe in the Viking myth. Icelandic companies catering to tourism have definitely taken part in the trend, that is now known as Vikingification. While most Icelanders have descended from farmers who descended from Vikings at some point down the line, the connotation in which Viking is being used is most often in a condescending manner. The Viking myth also contributes to the idea, that visitors are allowed to go wild, and throw standard rules of behavior out the window. Perhaps treating all the commercial Viking stuff with a grain of salt, and sticking to historical evidence is best. Number 6, never cross a river at an unmarked crossing. Roads that cross over rivers have usually been there for some time, and serve as tried and tested ways to safely cross. Rivers, especially in places such as the highlands, can be extremely unassuming in their swiftness and depth. Don't assume just anywhere is suitable, even in an SUV. Number 7, never climb onto a floating iceberg. Although enticing, it is never a good idea to hop from iceberg to floating iceberg in Yukulsau alone. The lagoon is deep and cold, the icebergs are slippery and moving structures, the list goes on as to why this is just a bad idea. Don't risk your life trying to take an impressive photo or trying to thrill seek. Number 8, never try to sneak your pet into Iceland. While it is possible to bring pets into Iceland, they require permits, and months spent in quarantine once they arrive. The reason is to protect Icelandic animals from diseases that don't exist on the island. Don't try to sneak any pets into Iceland, or risk them being immediately killed. Number 9, never camp or car camp on private property. In some remote places, it is difficult to tell what property is okay to camp on and what is not. In the east, there were too many RVs on private property which didn't go over very well with locals. It is best to follow the guidelines and if unsure, just ask. Number 10, never litter. While this should go without saying, 
it is still a problem everywhere, and not just among tourists in Iceland. It is dangerous for wildlife, such as grazing sheep and bird life. It is also a discourtesy to the tourists and visitors following afterwards, especially at natural hot pools in the countryside. While not all litter can be pinned on tourists, no one wants to see this beautiful landscape littered. Number 11, Never Disobey Pool Etiquette. A big poster from the National Center for Hygiene, Food Control, and Environmental Health, guides people in five languages on how to wash before entering the pool. There is also a sign informing people that washing without swimsuits is required. This is in order to keep the water in the pool as clean as possible. Number 12, Never Disturb the Moss. The Icelandic moss is very delicate and takes decades to grow. Do not tear out clumps in order to spell out a message unless stranded, and hoping a helicopter will spot you. Adding graffiti into the moss also sends the message to others, that it is permissible to do the same, however, so it is definitely frowned upon except in times of emergency. Number 13, Avoid Shopping at 10 to 11. If you have a late flight, a 10 to 11 may be your only choice, but you should try to avoid shopping at this supermarket chain, simply because it's the most expensive supermarket in Iceland. The prices at these stores are sometimes three times higher than at the cheapest alternative. Number 14, Never Wade Into the Ocean at Renishara Beach. The black sand beach at Renishara, close to the village of Vik on the south coast, has seen numerous tourist fatalities and near fatalities caused by getting too close to the waves. With an extremely strong undertow, erratic waves, and breathtaking scenery which makes it is easy to get distracted, this is no place to go swimming, or even to play a game of chase with the incoming waves. Number 15, never climb over the rope at waterfalls or cliffs. Ropes block people in at a certain point for a reason, to allow people to safety take pictures, and not worry about stepping off a cliff. Traveling off the path onto roped off areas also sends a message to others that it is allowed. It is definitely not in the best interest of anyone, least of all the volunteer search and rescue team, that may be summoned to help because they must risk their lives for something that could have been so easily avoided. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe to this channel.